When it comes to installing plugins, sometimes you might find after you've installed something, you've loaded up Cubase and you've gone to find your new, uh, I don't know, VST sampler or VST instrument and it's not there in the list despite you installing it. Or you've gone to load on new plugin which you've just installed and again, it's not showing up and you can't find it in Cubase. Why is that? Why is that happening? Well, before we look at Cubase, we need to understand that when you install plugins, there are specific directories that by default are normally used to install plugins too. So for example, usually you'll find with most installers when prompted where you'd like to install VST3, VST2 64-bit and VST2 32-bit, usually most installers will recognize the default locations and install them there. So one of the default locations, for example, under your C program files and common files, there'll be one for VST3. Usually all VST3 plugins will be installed to this location. For your VST2 64-bit plugins, it's under C program files and you'll see that there's also a folder called VST plugins. If that folder isn't there, normally the installers will create a folder with that name and install the plugins too. And then for your 32-bit plugin folders, it's under the x86 program files and then you'll notice that there's a VST2 plugins folder. Now speaking about 32-bit plugins, they're no longer supported inside of Cubase. So you have to be working with VST2 64-bit or with VST3. Now, when it comes to Cubase, when you load Cubase up for the first time after installing something, there are a set of folders and directories which Cubase scans uh, to look for the contents. And usually what happens is, if you've installed your plugins outside of the usual folders uh, where Cubase looks, it won't know that the plugins are there. So in this scenario, we need to make sure we tell Cubase where to look for the plugins. So to do that is pretty straightforward. In Cubase 10, you go to Studio and then go to VST Plugin Manager. For older versions of Cubase, you might find that it's no longer a studio. It was, I can't remember what it was called because they changed it, but it's where you'd normally do your audio, set, you know, get to your mixer and audio settings. You'll see VST Plugin Manager. Now, obviously we have two types of VST effects and VST instruments. Now we have the information, oh, I've done that again, I keep clicking the wrong thing. Uh, we have the plugin information box down here, which doesn't really show anything, unless you click on the plugin, you can see what format it is, if it's mono, stereo, what version it is, blah, 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 blah. But what we want to look at are the folders that Cubase is actually scanning and actively looking at for plugins. So if you click on the cog icon, it'll switch over to the path settings. Okay, so we can see where Cubase is scanning folders and looking for plugins. So we can see here all these different folders that Cubase is actually looking at. And I might have added a couple of these off the top of my head. Um, it's been a while. But what we need to do is if we know where a plugin is installed and Cubase is not scanning that folder, we can just simply add a path and navigate to the folder where the plugin shell is installed and then you know select that folder and add it and then when you go to re-scan the plugins Cubase will scan through all these different folders that it's been told to look through and it will find that new plugin now after it's scanned it will give you a little pop-up menu saying X amount of new plugins and um, it'll also tell you if any of the plugins have been blacklisted as well. So you can see here, zero new VST effects, zero new instruments, because obviously I've not installed anything new to when I last scanned it. But Cubase will tell you if it's found something new, which most of the time it will, once it knows where to look. Now, if you're using 32-bit plugins, they're no longer supported, so they'll end up being blacklisted. So if you're buying a plugin from a developer that's only working in 32-bit, which is, I can't think of any that don't have a, a you know, 64-bit version these days, you'll find that it will end up just getting blacklisted. So here you can see all the blacklisted plugins because when I install VST 64-bit plugins, I also install VST 32-bit plugins because uh, when I'm doing any screencasting stuff, sometimes some of the plugins uh, might or work better in 32-bit because they're supported, whereas the 64-bit ones, they can play up a little bit. Um, so that's why I have all these blacklisted. But you can see here in the VST effects, you can see the versions VST3, VST2, and that these are 64-bit. 
So that's pretty much the reason why you're not going to spot anything. And so when you're installing stuff, it's pretty important to know where you, you, the files are getting installed. You could create an entirely new folder on a completely different hard drive if you wanted to. And when you go to install the plugins, when it asks you the locations for VST3 and VST2, you could just chuck them all in that folder that you've created. And then when you load up Cubase, you just simply come to the path settings and just add the path in telling Cubase where that folder is. So it will scan for it when you hit rescan. And every time you load Cubase, it'll also know where to look. So there you go, that's why your VST plugins are probably not being shown up inside of Cubase. It's because Cubase doesn't know where they are until you tell it where they are. Or they might be blacklisted because they're 32-bit versions and you know the developer hasn't created a 64-bit version. So there we go. Hopefully you found this useful. Um, a bit of a quick one today. More videos to come. And for those of you that have still not cracked the um, Code Hunters challenge, I'm going to give you a couple of hints. The first clue is in the recording samples video. The second and third clues are actually, you don't need to watch any videos for those, you just need to try and crack the little puzzles I've left in the folder. And the final clue is in the winning draw video for the, the giveaway we did yesterday. But you have to pay close attention to the screen towards the near the end because you'll be able to see it, the clues at the end. Okay, so those are your little tips, your little hints. Thank you again for watching and I will see you all in the next video. If you have any questions about this, obviously just leave them in the comments box below and we'll all obviously help each other out and solve any issues for people. So thanks again guys and I hope you're all well and the lockdown isn't driving you insane.